Good morning. Morning. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. It is so cool to see where Vikings has gone. Uh, it's kind of amazing to me because starting out, I, I think there was buzz, but I think even what second, third season, things exploded for you. Would you? Did you see that? Is that the yeah. same? Um, at the beginning of um, filming, we had no idea what we were letting ourselves in for. Um, the scripts were great. I was sitting there with Gustav Skarsgård and, and talking about how original this show was and how the Vikings haven't been really been betrayed like this on the screen before. And, um, and as an actor, it was just a great challenge. We had no idea that when we got to the San Diego Comic Con, it was the first time where we actually kind of had some fan interaction. And people were dressed as Vikings and they were banging their shields and um, and they were really interested in, in you know the backstory of the characters and um, and, and it exploded. But also the, the 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 strength of the show is to do with the Vikings started off small and they grew in numbers and right. they started to colonize more um, areas and, and and countries and. And then eventually it exploded into the golden age of the Vikings, where everybody knew about the Vikings. You know, they never saw them coming, and then they were everywhere, and they were conquering. Um, and that's kind of how the TV show's gone. Michael has written it as in this small band of brothers that, that go west and discover England, and they come back, and then they start to look further afield and into France, into Europe. And now, when we go into season five, we're going to be going even further down the Mediterranean and, and to oh, Iceland. Really? And, and you now eventually. Um, maybe we won't uh, get to it in this season of Vikings, but you know, we all know that Leif Erikson ends up discovering America 500 years before Christopher Columbus. It's amazing how far the show could go. But even just speaking right now, uh, what what have you heard from fans about your performance? Because it's it's an amazing part of the the story right now. I love it. I love the the more people that say yeah, something. The thing is about Rollo is. Uh, like any character that Michael writes in Vikings, is they're, they're human characters. And gone are the days of TV when everything has to be black or white, good or evil. You're a bad guy, you need to die. You're a good guy, you win the day, you win the girl. Um, or, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's gone. And uh, thankfully, uh, Vikings is one of these shows that really does live in the grey. There are no good or evil characters. You know, everyone has heroic qualities and everyone has villainous qualities, just as like we all do in real life, as much as we hate to admit it. If we look deep down and dark into ourselves and um, and start asking tough questions of ourselves. It'll be very hard to to put yourself in some of the situations Rollo's been, for instance, and whether you do the, a different thing, whether you act differently. This, this is a guy who feels like he has absolutely nothing left for him mm. in in Kattegat. He's always been second best. His brother um, is very narcissistic and, and and has got carried away with his own ego. When in season one they they go west and they agree to be equal. Mm. Everyone will be equal. It seems that some people are more equal than others, and Nirolo even says it to him, he says, how will we ever be equal now, brother? And from that moment on, Ragnar continues to kind of, you know, reach for the stars of, of Viking society and leaves his brother in the darkness. Hmm. Rollo finds a kingdom in Francia and a king who treats him like the son he never had and gives him that little bit of encouragement that Rollo's never had before. And, and the, the people of Francia embrace him like they're his home, they're his family. It's very tough to you know to, to imagine that you might do something different in that situation. Everyone is driven by love, lust, power, greed, all those archetypal um, feelings. Um, they're all there, you know, in, in Vikings. And I always think that the show Vikings is it may be about the gods, the belief system, the battles, you know, the, mm. the, the voyaging across ocean to ocean, um, you know, the, the, the sibling rivalry. And, um, the, 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 the un otherworldly, visceral landscape that we film it on, it's not about any of those things. That's just the backdrop. Right. What it's really about is how us as, as, a, as a race have not really changed since the 9th century until the, you know, the 21st century. We're all the same and you could take characters out of, of Viking society and probably put them in the White House and you'd probably find some similarities. Right. And do you think, what do you think is going through his head as he's crowned? I mean, this is kind of... Uh, I, I don't know that anyone would have expected at the start of the season this is where he was going to end up. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, midway through. But what's fascinating about that is what's this, what happens in history. Right. Yeah, all the spoilers are in history. Books. Right. Um, but but the, what's interesting for me as an actor is that no one really knows what Rollo was before he became the Duke of Normandy. There's so many contrasting views and, and documentations in the mm. history books that some people paint him to be this perfect leader and that. But when you look down into that, it's, it's all propaganda from the right. King Duke of Norm Normandy that was trying to paint his lineage in a good light. And then you look at some of the stuff that was written by the Christians and the scriptures by the monks at the time about the Vikings and Rollo in general, and you'll find 
that he's he was a nasty, horrible piece of work, but right. that's obviously some propaganda for the Christian church. Then you look at some of the, the sagas that are listed in Iceland, and Rollo is is far more of a, a legendary character and gets up to kind of all sorts of stuff on par with some of the knights of the Arthurian legends. You know, right. it, because they were stories that were passed down from generation to generation to generation. So it's almost like Chinese whispers. It's hearsay and, and hyperbole that has become exciting and, and fantastical stories to tell to your mm. children, your children's children. Um, but none of these are actually fair representations of a human being. Right. But somewhere in the middle, for me as an actor, there is. And you've played that wonderfully, I have to say. Like I just think his 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 place in the world in, in Paris seems like it's always evolving, I, I guess scene to scene. Yeah. Does it uh, d does that come out as you're performing it? Like are you guys sitting there kind of pre planning what's coming? Yeah, I mean in, performance wise I mean? In season four it's been fascinating because learning to play this pagan, this heathen, uh, has been the challenge in itself, but then trying to reinvent him so he learns the, the Parisian fashions, the Franconian, right. um, Learning French. The and French and the language itself, old Franconian. He's, he's had to climb a mountain. I mean, for what he's done, he's transformed himself. He yeah. really wants this and he's made it work for himself. So you've got to give him credit for that, even if you still think he's a betraying, nasty traitor. Um, he's, he's worked for it. It hasn't just fallen on his lap. Um, but I think in season four, the second part of the season that will be on later on in the year, as we all know, sometimes when you get what you want, something that you've wanted all your life but you never actually achieved it, when you get it, it might not actually be all it's cracked up to be. The old saying, the grass is never greener on the other side. Right. I think Rollo might have a case of that and it might be in for a little midlife crisis, but hmm. rather than the Ferrari, it's going to be the Lombo that he's playing for. Hmm. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it.